Welcome to Culture on Tap. We are a podcast that is about bridging the cultural gap one conversation at a time. Uh, we have myself, Xavier Bright, sitting across from me or beside me, however you want to look at it. Uh, we have Dale Young and the mind, the mind, the man, the man, the man behind the camera, who y'all got to see last week, um, Range Armentar. So, for people that didn't know him, feel like if they're like that's exactly what I thought he would look like. Or if they're like, never would have thought never it. Never would have thought it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I know. <laughs> I know yeah. Tell us what you thought about, um, if you're, if what you pictured in your head, what range would have looked like. Tell us if you thought that he fulfilled your, yeah, did uh, I fulfill your your vision, your expectation, or, or not? did I let you down? <laughs> <laughs> but if you haven't already, please like, um, subscribe, and share on anywhere you listen or watch podcasts, and make sure you hit the bell so that you get the notifications uh, whenever we have new content coming out. Yes, please do that. We did not <laughs> hit our goal for, for the month of April, <laughs> and now as just we gained a few though. We gain, we gain yeah, some, we but some. as Justin Timberlake would say, it's going to be May. I, <laughs> I really wanted to say that. I like it. I, I'm a Justin fan, if people didn't know. So, yeah. But, yeah, please like, subscribe, tell your friends. But now it's time for Fun Facts with Range. Yeah. So uh, we're going to stick with the theme of Range in school. Um, Which I did attend. I, I, well, I didn't say I was going to say I've never said you didn't. However, it's, you know, um, so um, what what games? So like not recess, but PE Mm -hmm. like um, did you have PE, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Just making sure Uh, (laughs) uh, everybody agrees. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, I hated when did you do PE where you had to do. Um, uh, square dancing. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yes. No. No. Y'all. Ne- <laughs> well, that's what even part of the show. <laughs> you didn't square dance in PE. Not even once. Do si do and no. Never. Okay. Wow. Well, that was. <laughs> that, that wasn't the. Fun that fight. was a little gift that we didn't see we were getting. Um. Well, the rest of us. Would you agree that uh, square dancing is the worst part? I hated it. Hated it. What is one of the things, I mean, yes, dodgeball, kickball, those are fun. What is one, when the teacher would bring this out, what is something that you always loved in PE? Um, tetherball. Yeah. Uh, gymnastics, whenever we had, we'd, we'd bring out the, yeah, the yeah, beam yeah. and yeah, all yeah. of that. Any of that? Um, Ringing a bell? Tetherball is on the, on the pole, right? Yeah. yeah. We didn't play that at PE. We had one for recess. Okay. Mm. For like a week. And the, the little, what? what? <laughs> If y'all were good, we, y'all no, got... we tore it up. And oh, it was, okay. It was just That's a it. pole, random pole sitting in the yeah. middle of the playground. I think most playgrounds are that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the little square cart thingies that you would ride on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those. Um, yeah, I mean. What about the big parachute? Yes, the parachute was was amazing. Range, what did you think of the big parachute? Never touched a parachute. <laughs> Your school. Never, never jumped out of an airplane. <laughs> never touched a parachute. <laughs> So your school, not even in PE. your school didn't have the multicolored parachute that you could play the games where you'd pop the ball up in the air, or then you make it go real high, you have to run underneath it and not get caught, or you'd make a big bubble and everybody's sitting underneath it, and then that one kid has to be a jerk and like let air in. Nope. What did y'all do at PE? Well, we've already gone over cotton this. gators. No, we played rat rat cat. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the? <laughs> I thought that was recess. <laughs> That's P. Uh, That's man. all y'all did at P. But I can. I mean, we did exercises like you're supposed to. Exercises, uh, jumping jacks, <laughs> jumping jacks. <laughs> yeah. Is it like you're supposed to? That's little. I don't. I don't know of any. I don't remember of any so other y'all, game. Y'all didn't do gymnastics. Like with a beam, no. <laughs> and or, of course, y'all didn't do square dancing. Nope, no square dancing. No parachute. No parachute. 
No, no, no field roller car day. like what X was roller car. About. No field day. No field day. No field day. Did y'all did y'all do so? Did, like we've just gone off the rail now. Mm-hmm. Did y'all do once a year? Maybe it was twice a year. I can't remember if it was once or twice a year. Where there would be like, how many push ups can you do? How mm-hmm. quick can you run the mile? Pull yeah. up. You did that? Yeah, we had to do that. That's like your like your year end test type deal. Yeah, yeah. and Big then board. you had to you had to the choice at our school to either see how long you can dead hang <clears throat> from the barbell. Or the pull up bar, or do pull ups? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, at that age, every boy had to do the pull ups because yeah. that wasn't cool to do the to just hang there. Yeah, right. But y'all did that. Y'all did have that. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. It's yeah. like a like a benchmark year end test dodgeball type thing. Yes. That there's one that we we played dodgeball. Okay. Yeah. But no oh. parachute. No parachute. Never. Ah. <sighs> yeah. So please feel free in the comments. There you go. Uh, maybe you're not alone. Maybe maybe we are the weird ones. Maybe we lived in... That's what I'm going to go with. Maybe we were in real privileged schools. Um, <laughs> people had said that a whole lot. <laughs> 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 so, Let's see. Oh. Um, privileged schools and had rolly scooters and... We had enough funding... For a parachute. For a parachute. Yeah. Because you didn't have didn't. a clue. Like, your kids... Did it recently? Did it, yeah. And you were like, what is this? Well, yeah. Like, Jessica showed me pictures and stuff, and I'm like, I don't have a clue what that is. Yeah. No. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. Fun fact with range. Fun I, fact I mean, with and range. we, and like, I, I'm shocked every time. Every single time. Every single time. It's like, and it's, all, is, it's, it's all true. I yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, I, I, it, I vouch for this because when you, like, when you saw the parachute, you genuinely had no idea what that thing was. Correct. Like we're watching the kids do it because your sons are not the tallest. So no, <laughs> it was funny to watch them do to the parachute and, and Drake's kind of coming off the ground right? because he's weighs like six pounds. <laughs> uh, exactly. And so, and then you were like, what are they doing? And I was like, it's the big parachute. And you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. No. Hmm. Yeah. Well, well, there you go. Well, that was great. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't wait till next week <laughs> uh, to find some more fun facts with range. Um, but today we're going to talk about um, something that has really been a cultural hot topic in the church world. Yes. Um, over the course of the past, I would say, three years. However, um, I think this is something that's always been around. We just didn't have yeah, a name. Yeah, we didn't for name it. it. I, that's what I was gonna say. I think. I think. Um, which we'll get more <clears> to this. I think that, in some ways, it's a natural progression for people that are maturing in their faith. Well, um, but I would say in the last three to four years, especially the last two, it's become a thing with all the um, drama around church. Yeah, it's become more of a. And I would say it even became more of a thing um, <laughs> when um, we started addressing racism and mm-hmm. stuff like that in the church, mm-hmm. and then it became a really big thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I would say it's always been here. Not well, and like most things, something that we'll get into could be good has turned into more of a negative. Yeah. In a lot of people's eyes. For sure. And that thing that we're talking about is the deconstruction. Of one's faith. Um, so whenever you, first off, we've got to define what that is. So what what is what does deconstructing your faith mean? Um, so I I I had it wrote down, and for some reason it did not stay in my <laughs> notes. Um, but John Par Popper, John, I don't know who that is. John Piper, though, <laughs> I do know who he is. Wrote uh, what I thought was a very beautiful. I'm gonna. I'm probably not getting this exactly right. I'm just going off of memory. It is the maturing of your faith where you break down uh, what you believe into true understanding of what it is to follow Christ. Mm. Because I think, and the reason I say it that way is because I think um, no matter where you grew up in church, <clears throat> some of it is factual and some of it is opinionated. Yeah. It doesn't matter denomination, legalistic, conservative, yeah. uh, very open-handed on things, liberal. Um, and I would say in anything you do in life, there's factual to it and there's opinion. And yeah. so um, 
it, I, I like the maturing of faith to where you start breaking down what it actually, what what is your faith. Yeah. No, I think that's a, I mean, it's John Piper, so he hit the nail right on yeah. the head. Um, so have you experienced this, uh, deconstructing your faith? Yes, yes. For me, um, I had a huge um, deconstruction of my faith. So um, raised Southern Baptist um, and didn't really want to follow Christ um, growing up, gave my life to Christ uh, at 18 and decided to go to college for ministry and chose to go to college at a missionary Baptist college, which is even more um, restrictive than Southern Baptist. Good way to say it. Do uh, you like that, huh? Yeah. Uh, in, in a lot of ways. So being in that environment, being um, where I do think there was a lot of truth being taught, but also a lot of opinion being taught. Um, when I first went into ministry, I was very much a <clears throat> King James only <clears throat> Suit and tie every day. A lot of my, I I have I allowed a lot every of every day. Every day. Well, no, you were allowed to wear polos if you weren't teaching or preaching the gospel. Um, not wear a tie on those days too. Um, mm. but if you were in the pulpit, you need to have a tie on, unless it's Sunday night. Sometimes, so depending on how lax your church was, you could get away with not on Sunday night, maybe on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But Sunday morning, you better have a tie oh. on. Um, so just a, like very much King James only, very judgmental, very restrictive, um, very rule-based. Um, and honestly, what started changing for me was my wife just challenging me on, cool, I want to I want to back you on this and follow you. Show me a scripture. Yeah. And <clears throat> and in that, I, um, I started – struggling with being able to one show her in scripture and two, uh, I guess it just opened my eyes that like people that I respected in faith weren't doing some of the things I was doing. So I had to start going like, okay, what, what is the core of my faith? And then the rest of it, we can figure it out. Yeah. What about you? Um, I would say kind of, um, because I think in the sense, um, I'd like to say that I did, but I know people who really like went to deconstruction in the sense of is Jesus really who he says he is? No, whereas, no I, didn't, I didn't do that. Like, whereas for me, it was like more so deconstructing um, legalism and tradition. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, like th- it, th- so then let me re- like, yeah, when you go to that level, I didn't go to that level. Mine was more, um, okay. What, what is opinion that you would like me to follow, and what is fact that I have to follow? Right. Um. Uh. And 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 I would say, who I am in my faith <clears throat> today is a not polar opposite, like, but vastly different on the opinion side, mm-hmm. and some theological, not close in theological things. Um. Like both believe that you need Jesus for salvation. Right. Both believe that the Word of God is the inerrant Word. Um. But outside of like the core things, very different. Um, when I was young, uh, I, because of what I was taught, thought that the idea of being reformed or even leaning in that direction was just ludicrous and you probably didn't know Jesus. For <laughs> now, I lean way more that way uh, than like some people mm-hmm. would probably call me reformed. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Most of our friends are like, he's a, he's a de- reformed in denial. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm enough, like we've said this before, I'm enough reformed that I don't get to sit in the non-reform tables, but I'm not welcome to sit at the yeah. reform tables. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like, I think for me, it was just changing even, um, raising hand and worship, more charismatic things that I just was not, a, uh, privy to allowed to, um, before Yeah. that now I'm like, okay, like, yeah, yeah well, I think all of that. And even the things that, you know, I went through is a form of deconstruction. Um, But whenever I think of um, deconstruction, like from the stories that I listen to or hear or read, it's like they were going like down into the depths of their soul. Yeah. Whereas for me, 
it was more so, okay, this has nothing to do with Jesus. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, okay, let's, let's, <coughs> what is, what is scriptural and what is just legalism? You know what I'm right. saying? Where it, it's like, I've never, I haven't gotten to the point where I've questioned who God is, but it's just like, I'm like, questioning this institution that right. we've created. So do you, do you, have you ever like, not, I mean, I think it's different than deconstruction. Have you ever had a moment where you're like, <clears throat> what if this isn't real? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I don't, and I don't know that I'd qualify de- deconstruction because for me, um, and it's, it's very interesting. I've actually been texting a young man that we both know. Uh, I'll leave his name out of this mm-hmm. uh, today and basically asked me the question of what if you're, what if you're leading people to something of hope that there's actually no hope in that it's not real. Mm. Um, and so for me, like in these moments where I'm like, what if this wasn't real? What if, what if there was a guy that wrote all this was that smart that yeah. could like write in different forms, different fashions, different languages. Yeah. Um, and, and if, and if you're more of even a writer than I am to change writing styles, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Like you have a style that mm-hmm. people see you as, but to be able to, let's say you could do all that. And he wrote this book and never imagined that it would be what it is. Like for me, it I don't get there very quick. Like like I'm not there long because of how much God had to do in me to change. Me. Yeah. Like it 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 stops really quickly. Right. Um. And now I'm not saying that I don't question people's teaching of the word. Yeah. But as the word is real, I don't question that because I am someone that grew up hearing the word and wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. Like I wasn't, I wasn't someone that hit rock bottom and needed to be fine. Just, I knew all about Jesus. Like I grew up around hearing about Jesus. I just didn't want it. Right. Um, it wasn't something I was seeking after. So, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of the same with you. Like, yeah. So I guess maybe because of that, that's not where we can go to. Cause we know we weren't looking for you. You just can't like, yes, he didn't have to, like, he's always looked for us, but I got it when I didn't want it. Yeah. And, oh, for sure. That is, that is for sure. So I think a lot of times people, whenever we, we are talking about deconstruction, um, it's looked upon in a negative light. Right. So is deconstruction right or wrong? I So, yeah, is deconstruction right or wrong? I feel like it's where the line ends. Um for me, I would argue deconstruction is a, a sign of evidence to an extent of maturing in your faith. Yeah. Um, I know for me, uh, growing up, like it it rattled me when things that I learned as a kid weren't accurate to the Bible. Yeah. Jonah being one of them. Uh, I mean, there's multiple stories in the Bible where, I, you know, whether they're not whether portrayed wrong to children um, portrayed with a very Western mindset. Um, and then as I grew in my faith, like Jonah was that moment for me where it's like, okay, here's this guy. And he went to the belly of the well, and then he comes out and he leads people to Jesus or God and the end. Well, then as I'm maturing in my faith and I read this book and it says, all these people repented and fell on their face for God. And Jonah mm-hmm. says, why did you send me? I knew you would do this. I wish they would have died and went to hell. Mm-hmm. And that's how it ends, basically. Yeah. Like pouting under a tree. Pouting under a tree. Never once is, is he happy about these people. And it's a very, when you get into it, it's a racist moment. Like yeah. he, he's, he has a race issue with them. And that's how it ends. And he's the prophet of God. And like. There's a moment where I'm like, okay, I don't know how to reconcile with this. This is not something. And and so I think deconstruction from that is a good thing. Yeah. I think it's I think it's good to ask the question of how um, people like Jonathan Edwards, who is a, would probably be on people's Mount Rushmore of evangelists, yeah. believed it was okay to be, have slaves yeah. and preached it. Yeah. Like, how does a man have be a part of the great awakening of the gospel mistreat minorities. Yeah. Like that, that's a deconstruction of your faith. And I think 
There has to be a and, and to be to be honest with you, with that one, I don't have an answer yet. Yeah, like I don't, I do not understand how people could mistreat human beings and worship Jesus at the same time mm-hmm. in that fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that's an area that I'm still like wrestling, wrestling, processing through. I think that's a healthy deconstruction. Where I think it goes wrong is when you go, "Is God real?" Mm-hmm. Like. I think Matt Chandler said this best. He said it very recently in a message. Um, there should be a moment in your faith and in the evidence of what God has done where you, where you come to a stop and go, all of this can be challenged, but this right here, cannot. we cannot waver here. Yeah. And I think that's that's where we have to draw the line of that's when it went from right to wrong. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I think— you see it clearly in the scripture that things were being deconstructed. Absolutely. Like um, the psalmist constantly questioning God, whether it's Psalm 13 or right. David's like, how long is this going to happen? How long will my enemies prevail? How long, how long, how long um, would be considered problematic because we are questioning God. Right. And we're not supposed to do that. Right. Like, but they're a part of the sacred canon of scripture. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I mean, that that's deconstruction. Right. Like, Lord, why is this happening to me? Yeah. Where are you in the midst of this? I don't know if I believe. Help me to believe. Or Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Yeah. Him saying, you've heard that it was said this way, but I tell like, you this that way. it's this way. What is that? Yeah, you're literally saying, well, and I think trying to understand how the Old Testament and New Testament come together is a deconstruction of your faith. Absolutely. And it's very difficult, but if if Jesus, in the most impactful and the greatest sermon ever, ever, was literally deconstructing. <laughs> yeah. Like literally telling them, you've done this, this ain't it. This was wrong. Yeah. This is the this is how it's supposed to be interpreted. That's deconstruction. Right. And I, I want to continue with that. He is not saying <clears throat> what they're trying to follow in the Old Testament is wrong. The way they're going about following it is wrong. So let's be clear. We're not saying that the Old Testament that we're deconstructing right. the Old Testament. He is deconstructing that you your your religious way brought on a false teaching. Yeah. Yeah. So um I don't think I don't think that it's wrong. I don't think that it's wrong to wrestle with um, different things that you've been hurt by, different things that people have said, and you're like, well, hold on. I've been taught this way my entire life, but now you're saying this over here, like, I don't know what to think of that. You know what I'm saying? And going to people and asking questions um, who you respect in the faith and, and, and things of that nature, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, but... Because different things have been hijacked and politicized, right? It creates a problem, and now people are scared to admit that they're deconstructing. But on, then, on the other end, people are deconstructing them their way out of the Christian faith because they've stepped over, right? Stepped over the well, line, like that, what you're talking about. Yeah, I think that goes in our next question. What causes people to de- deconstruct their faith? So for me, it's less about is it wrong to deconstruct your faith. It's more wrong most of the time on why you're right. doing it. Like mm-hmm. most people aren't doing it to draw closer to God. Most people are doing it because they got hurt. Yeah. Or they're trying to find justification to live the life they want to live. Absolutely. That's 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 where we've gone wrong. Um, when you are, because here's the thing: if you are approaching God in a pure way and something. This moment happens in front of you that you've never saw it that way. It should pull you closer Mm -hmm. to the scripture, Mm -hmm. not push you away. Mm -hmm. But most of us, like I literally was having this conversation with with someone the other day about marriage. They said, um, well, I think God's okay with us marrying anybody because God is love. I'm Mm -hmm. like, sure is. Mm -hmm. But what about where he says unequally yoked? Well, that, 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 that what it means. And I'm like, Absolutely, that's what it means. Mm-hmm. And they're like, so then what's the answer? I was like, that's that's where you've got to get down in there. Right. Like, 
can he be love and still not want you to be with someone? Absolutely. If you read scripture. And I think this is, this goes back to you talking about the, the whole new Testament is them deconstructing their faith. I mean, Paul and Peter get into it about eating pork. Yeah. Like, like it's like everything like, yeah. no, you can do this now. Yeah. And so it's, it's literally <laughs> circumcision. Yeah. It's, it's, it's literally <laughs> everything. Yeah. And like the whole Bible is you've done it this way. But you really need to be doing it this way, mm-hmm. and and yeah, so yeah, I, I would say most people, I think the wrong comes into why you're deconstructing your faith, yeah. whether you get burned out or maybe you really really never knew him. Mm-hmm. And I think I think a lot of it, I mean, I think a lot of it is it, it does stem from church hurt. Absolutely. So it's like I've been hurt by this this institution, this group of people. So now I've got to go over here and sometimes it's a good thing right of like man they they treated me this way is this even scriptural or it's like well dang they treated me this way god must not be real right type of thing you know and it's it's just like i think a lot of it stems from how poorly as christians we've represented what christianity is right no i think that's so true i think you see people who <clears throat> well what happens is uh you're you're speaking that you fell in love with Jesus, but you fell fell in love with the man on the platform. Right. right. And then he falls apart yep. and it can't be the man fell. Mm-hmm. Jesus can't be real. Yeah. Like, so we take a human being that has <coughs> nothing in them that says that they're never going to fall. Mm-hmm. Like, and, I, and what I mean by fall, all pastors fall. Some fall very lightly. Like, and what I mean by lightly, like they just have a bad day. That's mm-hmm. still fall. Yeah. I'm talking fall like disqualifies himself from faith or not from faith, but from ministry. <laughs> you don't disqualify yourself from, <laughs> from ministry. Say, Whoa. <laughs> and we're gonna and so that. they step down as your pastor or they just move on and you're hurt. And now you're questioning, is there a savior? Right. Um, which tells me that your faith revolved around him and not Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So what are positives and negatives that come from, deconstruction um i would say some positives for me uh the man i am today uh Mm -hmm. i i would say uh i've said this a million times that the boy who fell in love with jesus probably could not sit at the table with the man that sits before you Mm -hmm. um but i'm okay with that um because i know the progression of where i go with my faith um to get to a place where um, and we've talked about this before. When I was young, like you wasn't teaching me nothing. I knew what I knew, and if you didn't agree with me, you're probably not saved. Um, which yep. is such a horrible message. <laughs> if you don't go to my church, you're probably not saved. Yeah, like if you even kind of rock different than me, you don't know Jesus. Yep. Uh, to be someone now that is very strong in his faith has a strong foundation, and even if you dis- differ from me, um, it's not affecting my faith. Yeah. And I think that came from de- deconstruction. You can believe something that I do not believe in, and I can still love you and respect you and disagree with you, and it doesn't waver my faith because I know who I am in Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's a huge positive. The negatives is I believe it's the <coughs> the Christian trend right now. Every time a sermon topic comes up that you don't like, Hmm. We're going to deconstruct our faith. Okay. Oh, well, I don't agree with you on abortion, so let me deconstruct this. I don't agree yeah. with you on marriage or dating yeah. or drinking or yeah. whatever else. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything that the pastor says that you, I don't believe the dogs, or I believe the dogs go to heaven and my pastor said they don't. So now I got to deconstruct my faith again. And, yeah. the, and the reality is the negative is you've decided when you don't like the word of God, I will contort it to where I like it. Mm. And so it's not even deconstruction. It is manipulation of selfishness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and and that's the negative part. And because I will say this, um, no one should ever deconstruct their faith alone. Yeah, like yeah. you that's should good. be in word. You should be in the commentary. You should be in prayer, and you should be reaching out to people. I, I can tell you, um, and you can vouch for this because you walked with me in this. When me and you met, um, you already leaned heavily on the reform side. I didn't think I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, when I first started, I was like, no, this is wrong. Mm-hmm. We talked and just through talk. And prayer, um, and really just hearing you out on what yeah. you believed, I was like, "Well, I believe that." No, yeah. like I, 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 and and here's what I decided: 
The reason I couldn't take on the label <laughs> is because some people in my life that were way too judgmental and hard on it. I wasn't disagreeing what their truth was. I was disagreeing with them. Mm-hmm. And 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 then I hear someone like I, I opened up enough to okay, let me hear what you have to say. And I'm like, well, we are like minded. Right, right. And I think to me, to deconstruct your faith, there needs to be people in your life that you respect. Um and, and what I mean, let me be clear on this. Um, they don't need to be de- deconstructing too. Yeah. Because that's just a mess. Yeah. It's someone that mm-hmm. has walked through this, like, and that's what me I said, I talked to you, I said, okay, you used to be extreme reform and have backed off some of that. Mm-hmm. I said, let's let's sit down and talk on this. Mm-hmm. And 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 we're talking over a year. Yeah. It wasn't like a, that, that's uh, another thing. But, uh, Don't deconstruct your faith in 15 minutes on mm-hmm. YouTube. <laughs> 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 like, just stop. <laughs> like, you didn't deconstruct anything. You took a lunch break. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, it's ridiculous with me. Like, I, I mean, yeah. if I have one more person walk to me and go, well, I don't think that Jesus actually walked on water. I'm like, well, where did you get that from? Well, I watched this video. I'm like, oh, here we go. You yeah. in a video. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it should take years. If if deconstruction does not lead to reconstruction, that's good. You're going to be derailed. That that's real good. If deconstruction has reconstruction attached to it, it's going to lead to gospel advancement. Absolutely. If you if you take notes, you, yeah. If you if you take notes while we talk. You should write that down. We'll probably hear that again on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, but no, good. I mean, it's like, because I think there's so many people <laughs> as pastors, it's frustrating <laughs> when you hear people say things You're and you're trying to teach them, like, this is not true. Instead of digging in and learning truth, they just walk away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, that's a negative. Of, like, I feel like the negative of deconstruction when it's done not properly, like you said, derail. Yeah. If I can't find a selfish way to fix this problem, I'm just going to walk away from Jesus. Yep. And that's that's what, well, maybe Jesus isn't real. Mm-hmm. So he's not real now that you can't twist his words mm-hmm. to where your dog gets to go to heaven. <laughs> and then it's like, and then it's like, well, I mean, maybe Jesus isn't real, but maybe God is. So I'm agnostic. I'm not atheist. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then all of these different things that come about and it's uh, just your like, truth isn't my truth oh, whatever that means yeah <laughs> you know and it's just like oh my gosh but healthy deconstruction is necessary because it's biblical we see it all over the scripture like we've, like we've talked about um i would say i think lecrae uh his his lyrics perfectly describe both um the negative and the positive uh in a song entitled Deconstruction on his new album, Church Clothes, super, Volume super good song. 4. I'm just going to read the lyrics. These aren't mine. These are his. Um, and it's just, it's, it's powerful. <clears throat> he said, I deconstructed long before people knew what to call it. I know that's scary to some folks, so hold on, let me pause it. Take you back to how it started. Maybe you relate. Maybe you ain't never met me, but you know my pain. Focused on Jesus in Atlanta, fresh from Tennessee, wasn't legalistic, catch me with a cup of Hennessy. I would speak at churches, hang with leaders and such. You know, Judah Piper and Keller, Tony Evans was clutch. I was so involved, never thought that I could fall, y'all. Right before the fall of 2015, I was all off. It involved killing Michael Brown, had me feeling down. Tweet about it, Christians call me clown. I was losing ground. And Vody was a hero of mine. Met with him plenty times. This time when he spoke, it cut me deeper than I realized. Double down, spoke about my pain. I was met with blame. Shame on you, Cray. Stop crying. Get back to Jesus' name. Cut me deep. I was losing sleep. God ain't you. God ain't these people your sheep. Why they hate me like they do? Maybe grace is really cheap. Maybe it's all a lie. They don't really love me. They just love it when I say the things that they want to hear in public. They're like following the God mean turning on black people. Is black evil? Why do they hate and attack people? I'm vulnerable and cautious. I'm reading Baldwin. ta got me thinking. Now I'm going all in. I ain't know if God was real no more. Every day we getting killed and I can't deal no more. I'm, started sleep- I'm starting to slip in the darkness. I'm feeling heartless. Christians got me traumatized. I don't know who God is. Drinking liquor for my therapy and smoking Mary tree. Maybe I should get divorced. I don't know why she married me. What's the purpose? What's the point? Nothing matters. I'm just matter. I'm just Adams. Ain't no Eve and ain't no Adam. Where's the Zannies? Let me at them. I was floating in confusion until I dropped. Woke up in a clinical depression. Then it all stopped. 
Sinning like Saul till I hit Damascus. God knocked me off my mule for I hit the casket. Heard a faint voice calling me, calling me late. I couldn't sleep. It said, Cray, I know you love me. I need you to feed my sheep. Tears streaming as I weep. Felt I heard the Lord speak. I've been running from you, but you never ran away from me. It was people that hurt me. It wasn't God, though. I let the church trauma turn into a God wound. I learned the Western world has twisted up the scriptures. So when I re-enlisted, I learned the Eastern context the way that Jesus meant it. My peace has been cemented. My soul has been relifted. My deconstruction ended. Reconstruction is beginning. My peace has been cemented. My soul has been relifted. My deconstruction ended. Reconstruction is beginning. That's good. There's a whole, whole, whole lot there. I, I would add, not that there's anything to add to that, um, most people that are attacking you when you are deconstructing your faith because they long to be able to do it. Mm. Um, and, I mean, we're not going to get into it today, but I think there's a huge thing between the Western and Eastern um, theology oh, yeah. that will change everything. Oh, yeah. Um, like I said, we we ain't got enough time today. Yeah, that's a that's a whole another episode. Um, I would close with uh, when it comes to deconstruction, s- some questions. Um, are your questions leading you to remove obstacles which lead to a greater love for Jesus? Hmm. So, are these things that you're questioning? Do they have to do with you coming closer to God, or are you just trying to are you trying to deconstruct your way out of believing no that's 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 so true yeah because i mean i i think like when you say that when when jonah hit me between the eyes uh i read five books on jonah mm. uh and and <coughs> commentaries and and I, to say that i still don't wrestle with how does he get to be a prophet which means he's in heaven like yeah. i'm struggling yeah uh and the best way i know to answer is um you know what? There's probably people struggling with you getting to go to heaven too. Mm. Wow. So, yeah, I yeah. would just add, uh, my final thought would be this. Um, if you were giving your life to this, then never stop learning. Yeah. Like if you're, a, if you're a mechanic or you're an engineer, like you never stop learning because that's your <laughs> career. But one day you retire from those things to, to say, I've given my life to Christ for me. That's why I read all the time. That's why I, I, I want to hear what is your faith look like. That's why I ask anyone that I respect in their faith, if you could read any book besides the Bible, what would it be? Because I want to know. Like, yeah. and if you read it, I'm probably going to read it because I want to know what makes you tick in the faith. Like, I, this is my life, so I, I want to know as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. If your questioning doesn't lead to a greater passion and desire for Jesus— you need to be careful. Absolutely. Because you will deconstruct your way out of the faith. Amen. This has been Culture on Tap. Thanks for tapping in with us. We'll see you next time. Culture on Tap is sponsored by Houston Radio Platinum, playing the best classic hits. You can download the Houston Radio Platinum app. It is in your app store, or just ask Alexa to play Houston Radio Platinum.